and yeah definitely agree. yeah and with with all these different subjects that you you know obviously talk about on your on your channel like where do you i guess i mean i guess this is a very vague question but like where do you kind of pick the like the central idea for each video like do you kind of have already like do you have it set up for like you know i'm gonna be doing this this and this for like the next three months or or are you just you know going as it comes or like you know thinking about it week by week kind of thing like how, how does that I had work? a better answer to that um i would benefit from being a little bit more systematic in having like good reasons behind where content comes from mm -hmm. the, I, I will say what, what i want the answer to look like is that a good video should have a clear aha moment mm -hmm. the like the problem is clear the solution is unclear but some shift in perspective makes the solution clear um because it's a visual channel, I, I do have a little bit of a filter on. I'll, I'll tend to talk about things that can be visualized more, even though there's lots of super worthy math where the thing that makes it beautiful isn't necessarily some visual to it, but it's like a really nice um, set of algebraic steps or whatever it might be. Um, honestly, if I look back over 2020, I feel a little bit disappointed with the content there, or at least like the principles behind choices going into stuff um, in a way that maybe spurred me to try to be a little bit more cognizant of why I'm choosing topics as I look look ahead at 21. Um, and one of the things like in the top of that mind is uh, making sure that I'm making something because like it personally excites me, not because of some vague sense that it should be made. Mm -hmm. um, and then also leaning into the idea that it is a channel about visualizing stuff. So having a good visual core uh, should prioritize a topic above uh, above others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are there some? I have seen oh, your... sorry. Continue, oh, sorry. continue. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I was gonna say I, I've seen your your TED talk where you talk about like getting people interested in in like math itself, like in general, and how um, your video, for example, um, the one where the the two mass blocks uh, and their collisions and things like that, and how how pi just comes out of nowhere. <laughs> I found that video, you know, rather fascinating. I'm, I'm guessing that was exactly your goal to say, like, hey, here's a situation that has nothing to do with a circle, but, you know, out comes pi out of nowhere. And I find it's a like an amazing way to just get people to think about math in a different way. And it's not just about adding numbers and multiplying 12 by 12 or whatever, <laughs> but it's 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 there. There are some mathematical like phenomena that are just embedded everywhere around you. Mm -hmm. So. It's such a, I mean, it's a compelling mystery, I guess, because people yeah. love pi. Uh, it's like yeah. such a familiar thing. Um, and it, it doesn't take too much to see why it's mysterious and want to know the answer. So those, those topics are, are gold if you can find them like uh, hiding under some mm. pile of dirt, right? Yeah. Where there's an accessible mystery that itself like motivates all these like new tools that you're going to have to bring in. Mm -hmm. And especially the, the, um, like the most beautiful formula e to the minus i oh, pi sure. is equal to minus uh minus one yeah that's like one of the craziest <laughs> formulas like anyone will ever see like mm -hmm. you have you have two irrational numbers an imaginary number and then like the unit they all come together so perfectly i find that you know like an absolute gem are there other equations like that just beautiful equations that just don't really make logical sense but they just work like in math Sure. Or, well, or... so you bring up like e to the pi i. I mean, in some sense, that that's like a terrible equation because <laughs> it's lying a little bit. Like, because you're like, you, you have to define what you mean by e to something when that something isn't just a, isn't just a counting number or a real number. Like, it, it kind of makes sense with real numbers because we extend the idea of repeated multiplication. But I, I think I've talked about this before somewhere. But that equation, like over time, has just rubbed me the wrong way because what it's actually the the claim that it's making is like pretty distinct from what the notation implies. Um, like the claim that it's making is when you plug in pi i to a certain infinite polynomial, you land on negative one. And mm -hmm. maybe implicit in there is like why this infinite polynomial is related to e and repeated multiplication. But the, the like complex exponentiation itself or imaginary exponentiation, exponentiation has very little directly related to e. Like when you're computationally verifying this, the number e will never show up in your computer's memory. <laughs> like even nothing, nothing even close to it. Um, yeah. So it, it's it's a beautiful equation, but like I think not not quite for the reasons that have like shot it into fame. <laughs> to your question of like other things that have this, you know that this quite beautiful, but it looks like it doesn't make logical sense. Um, maybe just because I'm like making a video on it, this is more top of mind. But 
you know, you can exponentiate all kinds of things other than imaginary numbers. You can exponentiate matrices. You can exponentiate operators. So if you take, um, well, you can abuse the notation and maybe write as e to the power of the derivative, right, where you're exponentiating an, a certain operator, the derivative that takes in a function and spits out another function. It gets you a new operator. Um, in that case, rather beautifully, the operator it gives you is the right shift operator. So oh. the derivative is something that you take in a function and it spits out something telling you it's slope everywhere. The right shift operator takes in a function f of x and it spits out f of x plus one. And it turns out that when you exponentiate the derivative, you get the right shift operator. So that oh, it's wow. like this. Um, <laughs> it's a statement that doesn't make sense until you define it, but it, it also has to do with the power series and all that. But it's also this really compact thing that um, read the right way, what it's doing is it's like solving a certain simple PDE that's talking about like transport of like, uh, you know, if, if, the, if the time rate of change of a function is equal to its spatial rate of change, you'd expect to see that function just sort of drift over like a wave over time. Um, so you can like read it off in a very nice way, but written down, it just, it looks like this kind of comically absurd thing. It's like, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> Take an e to the power of a derivative. We know that doesn't make sense. That's just, yeah. that's just nonsense, but it's, um, that's funny. And yeah, when you go about making a video, how much research do you actually do? Like how much time do you dedicate to like researching for a particular topic? So I would say that doesn't happen at the moment that I'm starting the video, but that happens like ambiently for the like year or two preceding it, where I think the right way to do it is that you're like constantly just learning new things and like researching new things and trying to come to better mm. understanding and like keeping notes and all that. And then those notes help you inform what the topic list is. And at some point you're looking at like a topic list and you're like, all right, there's a bunch of things that I've come across that are like related to this circle of things. So maybe we can like bring them together. So the actual like research phase on the one hand is like extensive, but it, it, it doesn't dominate the video production process. Once you say I'm starting this video. Um, mm -hmm. And in the times that it does, it, it ends up being like very halting, I think. because mm -hmm. It means you're kind of going in without a clear idea of what, the video should look like. <laughs>